What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got a 2020 7.3. He is complaining that his center high mounted stop lamp camera, because he does have the 360 camera, uh, is distorted and sometimes it doesn't work. There was, oh, I just walked into a spider web, gross. Uh, there is a special service message stating that if there's any distortion or any type of camera quality issue to replace the third brake light camera. So we are gonna do that today. I got the GoPro mounted and we're going to switch over and take this thing apart. So we got a T20 here on our gun. I'm just gonna go ahead and gingerly take these all the way out so we can get to our camera. I don't know if anybody's ever had to do the 360 camera alignment, but I'm going to show you guys. We got a couple connectors here. Go ahead and pull that off. It looks like we got just a tiny guy here, and that just pulls out as well. As you can see, our camera, we are going to be going for this, so we need to take these two torques out. They're pretty small I don't know if you guys can see that at all but uh, let's get over there we're gonna take that apart I'm gonna use the, uh, the ratchet ugh, to keep the shock down on this little itty bitty plastic I wonder if it's gonna be the smallest one I got because it looks pretty pretty dang small a oh, while wow, it a oh, while wow, it is the smallest one I got. Okay, so we got rear camera, center high mounted, stop lamp, 360. We are a T10. We are going small. So we're going to rip them out. They are coarse because they're going into plastic. So you guys can see us. It's loose. Using my finger on the back side, I'm just kind of pushing the camera lens up through the hole. Okay, okay, finally got it out. Here's the camera. Okay, I wonder if I can just go ahead and take this gray thing off. So go ahead and set that there. Check it out, got a little rubber gasket. Never seen that before on a, on a camera. We're gonna have to go ahead and pop that on. Okay, I like the way that is. Go ahead and put our gray thing back on. That's how it's sitting in the housing. You can see it's gonna have to kind of go like this. Just gotta kind of work that O-ring down in there. Okay, we're all the way seated. Okay, camera's in, we're all the way mounted flush. I like the way it looks, got the gasket on. So now what we have to do is gonna go ahead and reinstall it into the truck, but, but part of the procedure, vehicles equipped with a 360 camera align the 360 cameras. Refer to the 360 degree view camera alignment procedure in the workshop manual section 413 13b so let's go down there 413 13b general procedures 360 camera alignment all right while we go let this load we'll uh go put this back in no big deal um just make sure you get this get it seated because you got this rubber gasket all the way around. I have had to do a 360 camera um, alignment. It is kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, 
I feel it's something I should show you guys because uh, behind the scenes you guys uh, you know bring your truck in don't really know exactly what we're doing besides what the customer copy of your repair order says and it just said replaced camera performed alignment procedure well what really is the alignment procedure what, what what's he doing putting a toothpick behind each camera or something is he got some special shims that we don't know about no it's all software it's all software um that's it let's uh let's go back to the computer shall we all right here's the 360 camera alignment we need to go ahead and make sure that all of our camera angles, I'm sorry, our camera lenses are clean. What we're going to need to do uh, is go down the street to the uh, home base and we need to get the special tools for the 360 calibration. Alright, this is where we keep a bunch of our equipment down here in the main, the main hub. Yeah, getting some of this stuff out the way. Our manager Pete's got a bunch of uh, totes and caboodles for all of our VMMs. Got everything uh, nicely organized. Got to give it to him. But these are the alignment mats for the 360 camera. I'd say they're probably, I don't know. 20 pounds a piece, long as shit, and um, yeah, so let's go get these on the truck and then we'll uh, take them over to my shop. All right, guys, <laughs> I'm back in the shop. I got the mats all rolled out and everything is measured up. I had to go through and do it meticulously and I didn't really have uh, a way to properly show you uh, during the procedure so I'm gonna go over that really quick um, because this is kind of a tricky tricky thing to do uh, I've first off started made sure all the cameras are all clean we got one two three four five what they want you to start off doing they want you to find a measurement between the outside edge block of the tread i'm talking right there where it starts to go straight from there to there on each side of the tire so what i did was i came over here and measured with uh, appropriate tool made two marks and i measured the distance from there from there to there and i was at 77 inches so 77 inches puts me at this math problem how do i know what a is they tell me what A is. Measurement A is the distance between the inside edges of the alignment mats, 105 inches. So you take 105 inches minus my 77 divided by two. My, my, I take my 105 minus my 77 divided by two and that equals C. C is my 14. C is the distance from the outer edge of the tire block, which was still the measurement from B, to the alignment mat so i had to measure from the alignment mat to my line 14 inches i had to do that at all four tires and then once you are finished with that you have to make sure your mat is aligned up with the front axle then when you're done with that you come to the back of the vehicle you got three black dots over here you have over here you have two black dots you need to take the measurement between this side of the black dot and this side of the black dot. And it is supposed to be 110.5 inches. Phew. So as soon as you get all that done, the mats are aligned, everything's correct, making sure your X and your X, they're all um, 110.5 inches and afterwards it's going to tell you to use the appropriate diagnostic scan tool to perform the 360 degree camera alignment procedure so being that this is a 2020 i can no longer i can no longer use ids 
FDRS is what we are to be using. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of a rundown. I'm still new to it myself and we're going to uh, see if we can figure this out. FDRS looks a little different than what we're accustomed to. This is the Ford Diagnostic Repair Solution and uh, yeah, we're gonna let it connect to the vehicle. Okay, so we gotta enter some criteria and then we'll continue. Really weird, we're not uh, used to seeing an IDS screen like this, but uh, it's got the VIN, a bunch of other uh, pertinent information and part numbers. Go into the toolbox, pulls up a whole bunch of different other stuff. You can see totally not used to this. So let's see where the uh, 360 camera stuff is. Okay, I just kept scrolling down in this list, and here is 360 camera alignment. So we'll need to download, uh, I'm not really sure what that means. The test maybe, I guess. So we're just gonna follow these, these prompts. I've never done this before with FDRS. Front rear camera was replaced. Do you wish to continue? Yeah. Gonna ahead and hit continue. Okay, let me make sure I got the HVAC shut off. It's kind of hot sitting in here. Um, okay, I got the mats and everything hooked up. Ignition on, engine running. Okay, well if that's the case, I'm gonna put the AC on. Okay, I'm gonna hit continue. Place the vehicle in drive and remain stopped. Okay, hit continue. Okay, let's do its thing. Start driving the vehicle forward, are you kidding me? No way. Well that sucks. I go through <laughs> the workshop manual and it says to put those mats down and now FDRS is telling me to drive the vehicle to calibrate the cameras. Well that's kind of a bummer. Let me go back to this workshop manual. That's uh, yeah, it straight up said to remove, let me go back, let me go back to where I was, high mounted stop lamp. Okay, high mounted stop lamp, without camera, bulb replacement. So there it is to remove the screws to get the camera out of the center high mounted stop lamp. And it says vehicles with 360 camera and trailer reverse guidance, use a diagnostic scan tool to initiate the LIN module. Also, align the 360 cameras. And what does it have you do when you align the 360 cameras? It has you set out the mats, which we just went through. So I don't know if this was a waste of time, or if now I just am gonna go drive the vehicle. So let me go back to FDRS and see if this is gonna work or not. Okay, as soon as I started moving, this came up on the screen. So I'm backing out of the lot, uh, out of the shop now, and we're gonna see what IDS, what FDRS is saying compared to this. It's actually green. All right, let's see if we can navigate out of here. Big bump. Well, I hope this works. All right, we're gonna start again. So we're in drive, remain stopped, hitting the front forward camera button. I'm gonna hit continue. Okay, just went black. Is now in calibration state and the status screen should be viewable on the vehicle touch screen. Start driving the vehicle in forward. Uh, I'm gonna drive the vehicle steering wheel straight. So we're gonna have to back up because I can't, uh, I can't pull forward to get out of here. So that's what you guys remember seeing when I was pulling out in the beginning, but for some reason it didn't continue. So I'm still, still up. As soon as I switched forward, it turned off last time. So, all right, we're gonna continue. See what, uh, see what this is gonna tell me to do. Okay, we're gonna try this again. This time I'm driving straight right off the rip. I'm not pulling out of the shop. I don't know if 
that's good or not. Trying to keep it straight. Finally got it. I'm gonna have to turn around here. And then continue straight. This sucks. Okay, I'm finally getting it. Oh, Jesus. All right, this thing is so tricky. It is not even a joke, man. Oh my gosh, don't touch the steering wheel. Oh, kick me back out again. So you can see the green arrow. It did the front one. It did the left camera. I'm barely creeping here. Looks like it's doing the rear camera. Just did the rear camera. I'm going through this stop sign. Hope nobody's fucking coming. I'm continuing. Gonna do the right camera. Just gotta keep driving. Keep driving straight. Oh, curb. Driveway curb, not curb, just driveway curb. I'm trying to I'm trying to go straight. I'm running out of running out of straightness. You better go. You better go, dude. Oh my god. I'm running out of room. I'm running out of room. Oh my god. Go, go green, please. Go green. Oh, it went green. Woo, it just hit 100%. Oh my goodness, that was about to suck. Oh my goodness, that was about to suck. Okay, let me shut the key off. Oh my goodness. Hit enter. Procedure was successful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I guess putting the mats down I didn't have to do, although looking in the workshop manual procedure, it straight up said to align the 360 cameras to, oh, well, I guess I shouldn't have clicked on that, uh, to go and get the mats. So it was kind of a waste of time, but I guess my ultimate goal for making this video was to show you guys how to use the mats, what a technician has to go through in order to replace your cameras. So you can see it's just not as easy as it looks, although sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. Tell me what you guys think about that in the comment section below. If anybody's had to replace any of their cameras on their 360 system and their Super Duty, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll catch you guys next week. Thanks so much for watching. See you.